Hello, this PowerPoint will cover the concept of magical realism for introduction to literature. So let's start off with what is magical realism? It is a literary genre associated especially with Latin America that incorporates fantastic or mythical elements into otherwise realistic fiction. So in essence, it's a blending of fantasy and reality so that the distinction between the two is in fact erased. So what we're seeing here is a very quote-unquote normal story that has elements in it that are fantastical, meaning they're fantasy-based. So for example, in class I talked about having a dragon sit in the classroom. And in a story that is steeped in magical realism, it would just be a normal event. It wouldn't be seen as all that unusual even though everything else is pretty normal in that classroom. So it's, as I said, connected with Latin America and on the right you'll see a series of ma a map that has the uh, Latin American um, ideas or countries that are listed. Critics see it as a way for these writers to marry the ideas of European rationality and the irrational elements of the primitive Central and South Americans. So, you know, what we think of is that the European idea of the Enlightenment, where, you know, logic and reason are the dominating factors, are being integrated into the mystical the superstitions, the primitive ideas that you would see in a um, undeveloped country. And at the time that this was being emerging as a literary genre, these countries were still, for the most part, considered to be emerging economies. So here are some of the writers or books you may have heard of, like Water for Chocolate by Laura Esquivel, which is also a terrific movie, 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez, which won a Pulitzer, The House of the Spirits by Isabel Allende, The Men of Maze by Miguel Angel Astorius, and Dream Tigers by George Luis Borges, and we are reading one of his short stories in class. So the characteristics that you would generally see, we have the real world setting blended with fantastical elements. And when we say fantastical, we don't mean fantastic like awesome. We mean fantastical as in fantasy. So you see elements from dreams, from myths, religious texts, fairy tales, and we also see a non-linear time frame. So the chronology has to be paid attention to because that is in part part of the magical realism a lot of times. <clears throat> Other aspects of magical realism, which we'll talk about in more detail in this PowerPoint, include authorial reticence, plenitude, hybridity, metafiction, heightened awareness of mystery, political and social critiques. So we have a lot of underlying characteristics that go beyond the merging of fantasy and reality. So let's start off with authorial reticence. And what that means is the narrator speaks indifferently when describing fantastical elements or details. The narrator is completely reliable except for the fantastical elements. So if they're talking about how a bird emerges from a wedding cake, you know, from a realistic point of view, it couldn't happen unless it wasn't a real cake. On the other hand, in a magical realism, um, fiction or narrative, those kinds of things have a metaphorical or symbolic meaning that defines in large part the meaning of the story. So magical events are presented as ordinary occurrences. Therefore, the reader accepts the fabulous as normal. And again, it's the idea that it's not an entire fantasy but just one aspect or two aspects of the story are fantastical while the rest of the story is fairly normal. Then we have 
plenitude, which is an extraordinary abundance or plenty of disorienting details. It's the layering of several elements. And again, this is the variety of influences that have affected Latin America. I mean, you know, you can go all the way back <clears throat> to the days of Columbus and, you know, you had explorers influencing the way that Westerners or Europeans were seen because they would set sail and end up in Brazil or any of the other South American countries that you would see like Guatemala, um, Bolivia, and you know these Europeans had an influence to the effect that some of the more fantastical elements of all of our lives, especially with regards to superstition, are met counterpoint with this reasonableness that the Europeans brought in. Then we have hybridity, and this is the connecting of two often opposing realities to appear simultaneously together. This picture that I found on the right hand side is from a steampunk website, but it also kind of carries over this idea pretty well. You have an old fashioned keyboard with a modern day monitor and keeping in mind that desktop computers really weren't hitting um, businesses till the 1970s and 80s. So that would of course be a contradictory or paradoxical um, hybrid. So often you see examples of urban and rural being together, um, the Western and the primitive, meaning European and the primitive, and then the 17th and 20th centuries. In the story by Borgia that we're reading, the Gospel of St. Mark, we have a family that appears to be living in the 20th century, but the way they live could easily be perceived as 15th or 16th century. Their overwhelming desire to avoid going to hell takes them back 2,000 years to recreate the crucifixion of Christ, or in this case, the crucifixion of Balthazar. Metafiction is also very prevalent in magical realism, and this explores the impact fiction has on reality, reality on fiction, and the reader and the narrator's roles in between. So, in a nutshell, it draws attention to itself as a work of fiction. So, sometimes we see a movie about the making of a movie. Um, the television show 30 Rock, which was on for several years, is a TV show about the making of a TV show. So, um, you know, with this concept of metafiction, it's taking the reader inside the mind of the writer to a certain extent and showing them that writing in and of itself is a creative process that we are forced as writers to do and this is how it's done. And they're writing a story about writing a story. There's a heightened awareness of mystery, and this is when the reader must let go of pre-existing ties to conventional writing, including plot advancement, linear time, logic and reason, etc., to strive for a heightened state of awareness of life's connectedness or hidden meanings. So, you know, when we look at these ideas of convention, of logic, of reason, we oftentimes may not see a connection between our experience and um, someone else's experience. But if you look for these symbolic ideas that are not part of conventional writing, you can in fact often find um, interactions that may not make a lot of sense when you first read them, but when you think about them. So again, in our story that we're reading, the Gospel of St. Mark, we have Balthazar, who's a modern man. He is a passive 20th century man who finds himself in a position to teach a primitive family about God and s uh, salvation and the perils of hell. And only then do we see at the end when the family goes to crucify Balthazar the connection between Jesus and Balthazar Espinoza. There's also the idea of the political and social critique which is an implicit criticism of society and social norms particularly the elite and the traditions. 
So it focuses on the marginalized, the geographical, social, and economic minorities and outcasts of society. These are the kinds of, of things that, you know, writers specifically want the world to see. And as a consequence, they have the opportunity then to address these um, pure situations of poverty or any number of um, social issues in a fantastical way that in fact becomes very relevant when added to these ideas and it becomes a very interesting perspective. So when we look at again something like the idea of um, Baltazar trying to teach these primitive folks uh, about God and hell, we are seeing a minority of people out there who have been so marginalized they're not even aware of a society that exists beyond them. So magical realism is an alternative world. It uh, works to correct the reality of an established viewpoint. So if you have any questions or if you need any information about this, please email or text me. And I hope you have a great day.